Welcome to the Cowboy Up Podcast, where talk is all about the West. This episode is brought to you by White Stallion Ranch and produced by Cowboy Spirit USA. Greg Hager started writing song lyrics in grade school. Now this family man and award-winning musician makes music for a living. He's here to share a story and a few of his Western songs. So saddle up and let's join Russell and Alan and Greg at the ranch. Morning, Alan. How are you? Always enjoy being right here on a Monday. My Monday wouldn't be the same without without seeing your smiling face and being here at White Stallion. Well, it's uh, it's good to see you. It's always good to see you. And, uh, you know, you're a musician at all. I know your son is. Yeah, he plays a little, but I think it all drained into his bucket when we were <laughs> early on. Well, you know, uh, I think you said, did, did your mother try and get you some piano lessons? And the piano teacher came and said, Mrs. Day, let's think about soccer or football or something <laughs> else. So, You know, that's, ex- you know, I have the exact same story. My mother somehow back in 66 coerced some poor piano instructor to come out here. And she went to her, my mother after two or three and said, um, I'm going to move on to some students that they can learn how to play a piano actually (laughs) so that was the end she wasn't gonna make that drive out anymore for me um so i think we share that i can play the radio as long as there's some instructions um so on the other end of the spectrum we have a musician joining us singer songwriter greg hager joins us he's out on the road he's a nashville produced musician who's recorded uh and released nine cds all original country uh, or Western or gospel songs. In 2019, he was signed by MFG Records in Nashville. The following year, he was named Artist of the Year by the Academy of Western Artists. Greg travels around the country performing. Um, he's going to be in Arizona next month. In uh, For the past six years, he performed in Japan. His music is available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, etc., on and on. Greg is married with three children and lives in northeast North or southeast North Dakota near the family homestead, and that's a cool story in itself. So it's great to have you with us, Greg. Where are you right now? Oh, it's it's wonderful to be on the program, guys. Thank you so very much. I at the moment uh, am pulled off the road uh, <laughs> uh, in Springfield, Missouri. I've got a show in uh, South Texas this weekend and uh, need to be down there by tomorrow night for that. But uh, I'm actually in Springfield, Missouri at the moment. Wow. Well, I just got back from Texas in the Dude Ranchers annual convention and in Fort Worth, Texas. And they, they want to make sure that we don't confuse them with Dallas. And, and uh, in fact, they, <laughs> they've always had that complex. <laughs> they were yeah. wearing shirts around there and said, don't Dallas up our Fort Worth. <laughs> So I, I, I got the message. Um, so anyway, it was cold there. Uh, I'm not a big cold fan, and so it was, I had a lot of layers on. Um, yep. How'd you get into music? Well, it's, I, some would say that it was in my blood. On um, both sides of my family, uh, quite a lot of music that it seemed like every family event from my earliest memories always uh, ended up around a piano uh, with the the family, my aunts and uncles, my parents, everybody would be singing hymns or or Christmas carols or you know just whatever the, the popular song of the day was and and uh, it's it's kind of the life that I knew. I when I was seven years old, I I learned to play guitar and I had the dream as a kid that I wanted to use music to make a difference and I started writing music. I started writing songs, not just melody but lyric and melody at the age of seven as well and it's just something that i have always done and you know now i get to do it full time it's just it's it was a dream and it's been a dream come true talk about the homestead uh north dakota how did that tell us the era Uh, and the story yeah our family land uh, we were homesteaded in 1883 and of course north dakota became a state in 1889 and uh, so our land has been continuously occupied by Hagers ever since. Uh, my folks are actually on the homestead itself. I bought the place just next door. And all of our travels, our musical travels, are 
right there where I, where I grew up. Uh, we had a dairy when I was younger. We, you know, grain farmed. We had cattle, horses off and on. And, and so the life that I was blessed to live and still get to, to some extent has been fingers in the dirt, touching an animal, you know, doing all, doing all the stuff. And it's been good to have that as a, as who I am because, you know, that's so many people's stories, the life of, of, of the land and, and cattle and country and cowboys and, and, um, you know, becomes a backdrop for much of the music that I write. So oh, go ahead. Is it still rural? I mean, we're, yeah, we are, yeah, we are very rural. Uh, our place is about 15 miles from the nearest town, which is it's at Valley City. And Valley City is 60 miles west of the Minnesota border on Interstate 94, just to sort of give context in that very southeast corner. Uh, very rural. Um, our town is only 5,000 people. you got to go quite a distance to get to anything that's larger than that. And then we're not that far from much smaller. Very rural. Uh, most of the area around where I live is uh, grain farming. You know, the, the, the soil is too good just to grow grass for cattle, but... Most of my neighbors do actually raise cattle as well, uh, but it's mostly mostly grain farming. What kind of grain is it there? Uh, soybean and corn have kind of become the main crops in the last decade. Uh, you know, when I was younger, we we raised what we needed for our cattle. Uh, an awful lot of wheat uh, still gets grown in our area. Uh, my neighbors grow a lot of wheat and. And uh, but probably the number one and number two is soybeans and corn at this time. Well, if you're not involved in in farming in up in your world, you're probably not there very long. Is that a fair statement? It, it's a little bit fair that my my dream of music has allowed me to be nearly full time now for the last 15 years. The last three years for any of us who live on the road have been a bit of an adjustment. But you know, averaging over 140 concerts a year on the road means that I'm wow. traveling, you know, the better part of 260, 270 days a year. Wow. That's that's a big number. Where 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 do your travels take you? Are you do you do mostly rural areas and schools or what who 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 are your audiences? We we travel all around the United States. Uh, you know, as as a, a western flavor artist, of course, it uh, would tend to be more of the central part of the United States. You know, I, I have I've tried to make some inroads on the coasts and I don't think they understand Western culture quite as well as maybe we would like that they did. Uh, it might account for some of the problems is they don't have enough cowboy in their thinking, and that's why they act the way they do. But uh, we, we travel all over the United States. I've done many, many trips over to Japan and uh, singing cowboy songs in, in Japan. They love the American cowboy culture. Uh, I'll be in Scotland next month uh, sharing my music there and, and uh, but in a typical year, I'll probably do concerts in about 25 states. Wow. Well, I, I, you know, Stan, our producer would love to hear you when you said that, you know, they, they need a little more cowboy culture to to uh, maybe <laughs> see, interbreeding, f- find the right path, oh, so to speak. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there, there's an awful lot about the cowboy way that that uh, would and should be a way of living. You know, I mean, that's, I think why we understand it in the Midwest so well is a handshake means something. You know, if you give somebody your word, it means something. You know, having character, having integrity, having a reputation, understanding the brand. Who am I? Who do I ride for? Who do I represent? And letting that fabric that we live every single day, uh, if people would grasp onto that, I just think most of our problems would go away. Do you still live on the old homestead? No, he lives next to it. He said, uh, oh, right next, next door. door. My my folks are on the homestead, and I'm on the uh, the land right next door, which is terrific. So you know, it's it's interesting. You say I think I heard the governor of Wyoming say many many years ago. It was probably 25 years ago. He was a Democrat in Wyoming at the time, and he said, you know, it's more in his view. He said more about rural versus urban than right versus left or well he was talking about republicans and democrats because he was a democrat in a republican state and i i i think sometimes the cowboy way is you know you're talking about you're you're uh heard a lot more in the center of the country that's not necessarily the west 
but it it it's where rural and agriculture meet and that is a different culture than urban wherever and i i, I yeah. suspect that's so you play original music only do i understand that right that's correct as when i you know I, i'm a very prolific writer and when i was starting to do public performances when i was you know in my te- my teen years what i found was that one not only did audiences seem to connect better with the music that i had written but that when i would sing you know say a george Strait song or or somebody else's song people would come up and say things like well I don't know if I really like your interpretation of that song, you know, because we all personalize music that we sing. And the light bulb went off for me is, you know, I don't want to be a copycat. I want when someone thinks about Greg Hager and my music that they do think about the stories and my perspective and my, you know, my painting of, of the picture, whether it be a story song or or a love song or, you know, a, a, you know, a pastoral scene of some kind that, you know, it's original. So I only sing original material from the platform. And, and if they don't like it, it's because they didn't like it, not because it wasn't mm. in their mind. They were thinking, you know, George Strait never sang it like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what are your favorite musicians? What, what, what ones have influenced you in your career? Well, definitely with my guitar playing, I grew up listening to Gordon Lightfoot and John Denver and Glenn Campbell, Roger Whitaker, and you know those guys all played 12-string guitar, and so I do heavily focus all everything I do with a 12-string guitar for my my rhythm and for my finger picking style. Um, I love Kyle Evans. You know, it's a, he's a South Dakota boy, and uh, the music of Kyle telling the, the cowboy story. Um, I listen often to uh, different songwriters. I really like Nancy Griffith. Um, I also like Ralph McTell. Uh, he's a, an English writer. And, you know, guys that write a story that I can get wrapped up into the story is the, the ten- type of music that I tend to gravitate more towards because it's the story that connects with me. It's a story that reaches into my heart and kind of grabs onto it and, uh, you know, m- changes me and it, it affects me and you know the music that does that to me has influenced then the songs that i write that i want other people to see the world as i see it or to be touched by the perspective or the experience that i'm writing from is that why you only play original music it, it really is you know it's I, I want people to to you know make a connection with with me as an artist to know me as a person and, uh, well, you know, if you're riding a horse, they say that, uh, you establish a relationship with the horse in miles and you establish friendship with people in years mm. and <laughs> music touches people in a really, really deep place that it touches the heart and the mind and somehow weaves its way into literally, I would say a soul type of connection. And so doing original music, I think lets people know me as a, as an individual, on a very intimate level. If they've never met me, but they listen to my music, when we finally do meet, they say, you're exactly who I thought you were. And to me, that's the greatest compliment is that people can know you intimately by the things that you say, by the things you record, and you're the person that you actually are. Well, that, of course, leads right straight into you got to play your favorite song for us. Can't, can't pass that by. Can't pass that by. You know, one of those favorite songs is uh, the you know off of my newest Western album. It's State of Mind, and you know people. I, I I at some point will write a book. People always will say, well, why did you write that song? And in a concert, I do a very kind of a storyteller's format. But State of Mind, people will in this great country they say, well, you're not a cowboy if you don't come from Texas, or you know, oh, you oh don't have, don't say that. You, you, you can't have <laughs> cow, cowboys in in michigan or you know but the western lifestyle the the life of a cowboy it's it's not just the physical state that you live in but it's actually the condition of your mind it's how do you live who are you and that was the reason why i wrote state of mind and and it really is one of my my favorite songs that i've ever written well that's perfect and that's a great lead-in and of course i we agree 100 percent. i think that's one of the 
central tenets of what Alan and I do with Cowboy Up. It, you know, you could. Uh, my wife's from England. She's as cowgirl as they come, and and you 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 can just be from anywhere and and embrace the culture and go live it. And uh, so we're we're looking forward to hearing State of Mind right now. It's not just the state of Texas, though it could be. Out in Oklahoma that you will see. In Utah or Dakota where they tend the land Wyoming and Montana or the desert sand From Arkansas to Michigan you'll find but What makes you a cowboy is the state of mind State of mind You don't have to go that far and you will find no matter where you are, it's more than just a place you hang your hat. My friend, it's really so much more than that. It's the state of mind. I've seen it in Nebraska, but not only there. Iowa and Illinois have got their share In fact, across this land of ours from sea to sea From Florida to Washington, there will be Through Canada and New Mexico you'll find What makes you a cowboy is the state of mind State of mind you don't have to go that far and you will find No matter where you are It's more than just the place you hang your hat My friend, it's really so much more than that It's the state of mind more than just the place you hang your hat my friend it's really so much more than that it's the state of mind it's the state of mind I've got the uh, the blessing, and I do count it that, that I do have the blessing of recording in Nashville, Tennessee. The the type of music, you know, I, I do kind of a Western style of music. I'm very hesitant to say country anymore is because now people say if you hear country, they're like, was well, it blues? Is it rap? Is it rock? I mean, what, what kind of music is it? Uh, country no longer means what it did, but Western music paints a different picture. And what I've found in... Nashville is they think what country used to be. I mean, they, they, their way of thinking, they're playing their instinct is all, you know, exactly what I envision music to be in my mind. And so to get to be in Nashville, my, my producer, my record labels there, of course, but to have access through that relationship to the best players in the business who they do music for a living to say, I want it to sound like this. And they can just in one take, play it it's 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 quite amazing and and so to get to record with that caliber of musician on everything that i record uh, is why i choose to record there and you know it is you know better than me uh, better than i know it, it's it's really difficult to make a living in music and you know okay there's uh who is it taylor swift we had a wrangler at the convention who had the same name boy i wonder how much grief he gets <laughs> wow he. Yeah. So Taylor Swift, th those are anomalies. Most people can't 
make a living doing music. What what do you think it really takes to make that happen? Yeah, and and I I do for the last 15 years, you know, for your listeners to understand, I've been nearly uh, full time with music, paying all of my bills, keeping my place up, covering the road expenses with my music as an original mu- as an original artist. It can be done, but the key and what I don't see with a lot of people who want to use music as a living, it's an unbelievable workload, and most people are not willing to work as hard as it takes to figure out how can I earn today's wage, what can I do today to you know, what venue can I book? How can I be there? I mean, it, it's possible. You know, the time on the road is one thing. You know, how to figure out, you know, where can I play? How do I treat this like a business? How much do I have to charge or how much do I have to bid for this event or that event or this park or that grandstand concert or, you know, just the, the, the actual aspects of, of cost and expense and travel and how small can I live so that I can have profit on the other side uh, vehicle maintenance, all of these things that go into literally living on the road. Um, I think most people who don't make a living at music aren't willing to do what it takes. Um, you know, I, I play, I play all sorts of venues. I'll play, you know, park series. I, I play some rodeos. I do a uh, concerts at, at uh, county fairs and state fairs, uh, different music festivals, uh, uh, you know, church events, uh, you know, any place that wants good values music are where most of my referrals come from is, is, you know, I've earned the place that I don't have to proactively make a lot of outbound calls to say, you know, hey, can I play? It's mostly, hey, Greg, if you're going to be coming to Texas, let us know because we want to get a couple of shows booked for you. So, you know, I've earned that reputation with what I do that, 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 the the requests come in and it's just a man man a matter of ma- a matter of managing the travel to say okay okay next february 2025 i've got i'm going to be in florida you know I, I start heavily contacting those groups down there and say hey i've got these dates are confirmed these are open you know let's get stuff filled in do you and ever think so it's, it, do you ever think well where is home <laughs> you're on the road uh, a lot yeah, sometimes, you know, my, when my kids were younger, they've all grown and, and left home now, but my kids grew up on the road, uh, literally. I mean, we traveled in a van. They all had their own seat. Uh, we traveled as a family. Uh, my wife still travels with, she's an integral part of the concert, helping out with sound and, and, uh, the music type stuff. And, and so when you're gone so much, you know, I know where home is because that's, that's roots. And so to get home and to pull into the driveway and say, you know, we're home for a week or we're home for four days or whatever it happens to be. It just is like the world becomes right and good and proper to be at home. But, you know, a different hotel every night or sometimes we'll stay with host host families and, and have a good time with that. But it's when you're gone, 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 it does get tiring. And, that, and that's another part of the work that a lot of people don't realize you know, to make a living with music, you're going to be a lot of strange places, sleep on a lot of weird pillows, have a lot of <laughs> interesting experiences. How about so? How about those kids? They were in the vans. They had their seat, or in the van, they they had their seats. Were they homeschooled? Did they? Did they? Yes, we 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 home we homeschooled the kids. Yeah. And uh, at, at first we didn't, but then it got to be when the the school would say, "Okay, Greg, Andrea, how long are you going to be gone this time?" It's like, "Oh, this is a two week loop," and they were got to the point as this is too much for the teachers to lesson plan separately for you than it is for the kids. It's like, fine, we'll just homeschool. And then we didn't have to ask, ask permission to be gone. We just left. And, and my wife has her degree in education. So it was just, she just did it. And they grew up on the road. We had, um, you know, every day was a, a, a few. And so they'd have to research places if we were doing shows in Arizona uh, they'd have to research the Grand Canyon or Hoover Dam, oh, and perfect. then we would go and and then we'd go and see all these places that, you know, they they did the research and write their papers and and all of those educational things that we could add into it. Um, the oldest, our oldest daughter Hannah, really took to the stage, an unbelievably good singer, and uh, she's carried on with that. She's married now. She married a rancher in South Dakota, 
and uh, sings and plays where she's at. Our, 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 our two younger kids, they, they, they didn't like to sing. They would if I asked them, but nobody was happy when they sang. And, uh, <laughs> but, but they were, they, they were really good with the uh, equipment and with the merchandise <laughs> table and could really help you know, get product moved. So they helped out then, but they were really glad when they grew up enough to leave home and didn't have to travel anymore. <laughs> so that was going to be my next question. We tracked those kids down. What would they say about that life on the road today? <laughs> you know, I, I, I would like to know that answer. <laughs> 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 I, what, what my hope is guys is my hope is at some point, you know, as, as a dad, you know, as it, they were, they were a part of my dream. They didn't ask for it, but you know, as a family, they had to be part of it. My hope is that someday that they will either, either to, to Andrea, to their mom or me is say, you know, I didn't like it at the time, but those were really cool days. You haven't heard those um, words yet. <laughs> I have, I haven't yet, but I can, I might, my, my son's a barber and the skills that my son has with people and handling the merchandise part of, you know, paying for it. I, you know, he's learned skills that he, he, he knew as a, a kid, a single digit kid managing money and being nice to the customer. I mean, it's made a difference in his life. Uh, our youngest daughter is a pastry chef in Kansas city and, you know, she's so good with people and so good with creativity. And, and, you know, I think the, the skills that she has to be successful as a chef, you know, her, Andrea and I look back and say, you know, I think some of the time that she spent on the road contributed to that, but so I'm hoping they say, Dad, it was a cool time, but it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> do you do you sing as a family together when you get together? Uh, our oldest daughter will some. The two little kids will sing. Little, I call them little. They're 22 and 21. Uh, they will they will sing, but it's not not like a singing family. Like we just say, Hey, let's sing. Uh, you know cattle call or something and then we all just do a part it's, it's not the van not, traps not, <laughs> yeah, i was no, just no. thinking that <laughs> well you know it's interesting i you know there's two sides to every coin and you know i think if you asked my first family the two boys that are in their 30s now they would say well it was a great adventure growing up on a dude ranch but dad worked too much and he should have been <laughs> this or that a little differently and and you know coming from me i thought well i didn't have dinner with my parents seven months a year for my entire youth and never even thought twice and then you know i'm starting all over again with a nearly six-year-old and she gets uh, all the advantages and and a little more of my time so it, it you know kids are going to carry with them their own perspective and and we can only do what we do i think um yeah. where are you going to be in arizona uh, the, uh, well, the what here's the 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 fun adventure is you know when it's below zero in North Dakota if I can be smart enough to book shows down south I get to leave the bitter cold at home and go enjoy you know anything above 32 degrees is pretty nice well it's so, spectacular here today uh, so I'll tell you. I will I'll be at a couple of uh, uh, I'll be at uh, in Apache Junction for a couple of shows uh, the Lost Dutchman uh, RV Resort is hosting a concert. Uh, Rock Shadows Resort is hosting a concert, uh, and then I've got a, a church that's hosting a, another concert too. They have a lot of retirees in the area, and and so just kind of western, a little bit of a um, little bit of gospel music for those concerts, but mostly the western and cowboy perspective. And and uh, I've got relatives in the area, so you know it's fun to combine travel with you know getting to see family when you're on the road as well. And and when, what what are the dates? Do you have those? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, so February 3rd, we've got a concert at, at the Lost Dutchman. Uh, that's an Apache Junction. It's a 6.30 show, and uh, that one's, uh, I think that's $10 at the door. Uh, the On the 4th, uh, that's, I, evidently there's some, they had some problem in their, in their, uh, their concert hall, and I think we're going to end up being in a tent for an afternoon concert. It's a 4 o'clock concert. Uh, and that's at Rock Shadows. Uh, I will have updated information on my website as their uh, repair job gets resolved. Uh, GregHager.com. Uh, that one's just a free will, you know, free will at the door. And and the same with the one on February 7th. That's at Calvary uh, Free Lutheran Church in Mesa. And that's just going to be just a free will donation at the door for that concert as well. Well, that's that's great, and not not venturing down south to the better part of the state, Tucson. 
<laughs> well, my, my I've got relatives who actually live a little further south in in Suarita. Oh yeah. And so we will we'll be down there. But you know the what, one of the challenges for any road musician, and this hopefully will help your listeners. And if people you know connect with my music, it's the referral that makes a difference. You know, I don't live in Arizona, so if I call up, I don't know, a hundred different places, some of them may have heard of me, some of them may not have. And so that personal referral, that personal relationship, hey, we saw Greg's show, we need to try to get him here, that puts a face on it rather than just like a cold call, um, touching base with the retirement village and saying, hey, can I come down and sing a concert? You know, we'll do a ticket split or whatever the creative uh, funding is. Um, that referral will make a big difference for myself and other great musicians who, you know, do travel. Perfect. Well, um, and, and you mentioned it, greghager.com. Is that yep. the, the best place to get CDs? That, and, and you mentioned merchandise yes. tables. So I assume you've got some other stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, CDs, uh, I've got, uh, actually, my 10th, I actually have a 10th album. You know, you mentioned nine. My 10th album is actually an EP in Japanese. So I've got a, a couple of, a couple of songs that I, I mean, it's a big, it's a big seller here in the central U.S., let me tell you. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, a couple what of took songs. You to, that, to Japan? What, what got you in that world? Well, the interest is that the Japanese people consider the American cowboy on exactly the same level as their samurai. And the reason is, with the rebuilding effort after World War II, uh, the Japanese people basically only got to watch what the U.S. government let them, and it was American values, television, and music. So, Leave it to Beaver, Father Knows Best, The Rifleman, Fort Laramie, Little House on the Prairie, uh, Gunsmoke, all of these American serials that talked about the value of the American cowboy. What we talked at the beginning of the interview, the stories, the lessons, the character was all part of trying to let the people know this is who America is. And so that generation that's, you know, the, the 70 somethings now and the kids, they grew up on American cowboy TV. And so the picture of the American cowboy is huge. Clock signs in Tokyo, that's an American a cowboy grabbing the brim of his hat, stepping out onto the street. So when I go over as a, a Western and cowboy musician, people come to hear, well, what's the American going to say? But we want to hear a cowboy music because it touches them. It, it, the Japanese listener says, I never heard music like this, but it, it makes me feel things. You know, the, the values music, the, the story of the cowboy, um, the Japanese people, they, they love cowboy music. You know, 40 years ago, my dad traveled with a state, Arizona, uh, a state delegation promoting travel to Arizona, and he was the cowboy in the group, so to speak. And he had a cowboy hat, and he was about six foot tall. He was no six foot four, but they would come running up to him 40 years ago. John Wayne! John Wayne is here! John Wayne, yeah. <laughs> he didn't really look like John Wayne either. So it showed the resonance that that that, uh, that had. And, you know, I heard this morning Japan has the second best education system in the world, and so their culture and maybe what we promoted about America helped them develop one that gives them an over 99% graduation rate from high school. I heard that this My morning. My goodness. So it's, it's, it has an impact. Yeah. There's tremendous pressure on the Japanese to perform, you know, and, and I think we all could learn a little bit from that, that they, they want to excel. They want to be outstanding at everything that they try. And so, you know, education is no different. Um, and, you know, I think we, we, we all could learn from that. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I'll tell you, especially you know, now, we're 18th, I, I heard this morning, I think, or something. Yeah. I'm not sure about that number. Greg Hager, G-R-E-G-H-A-G-E-R.com is where to go and get CDs and learn more and find out where they can catch you live. Um, here in Arizona, yeah. we're gonna, you're gonna be in the Apache Junction area. Junction. Yeah. And we're going to finish up with Cowboy Hall of Fame, one of your songs. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. And if folks do social media, if they just search up Greg Hager or Greg Hager Music on all of the channels, they will 
find us Facebook, X, uh, formerly Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I mean, we, we try to use the places that people are. But, yeah, Cowboy Hall of Fame, I wrote it because in North Dakota we actually have – a physical building, a, a, a museum that's dedicated to the impact that ranching and rodeo and the Native American influences had, in our case, specifically on North Dakota. It's a hall to honor people who were above average. You know, I, I tease that we're, we're, we're all the same, but, you know, or we're all equal, but some people are more equal. You know, there's people, <laughs> I've heard there's that some before. people that, that truly were outstanding. I mean, that, that, some of the, the the rodeo events and the impact of of ranching and rodeo and and what folks did with cattle and cattle breeds and and horses. I mean, North Dakota was very influential with that. So, uh, I wrote that song for our own Hall of Fame. But there's truth in it, and that truth I think uh, has a universal application. Well, that's the perfect end to this great show. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Greg. Uh, yeah, thanks, Greg. Yeah, thank you for letting me be on your program, guys. All right, and now, Cowboy Hall of Fame. There are those who rode for money And those who just had fun But they all shared the great desire The need to get her done We'll always remember their accomplishments and name A legend lives forever at the Cowboy Hall of Fame Stories of the stock that's rode And of the cowboys that were throwed The legacy of ranchers and their land Memories of storms that came That tried another dream to claim And picking up resolve to carry on of Buckles chased and buckles won Of tragedy and living by the gun Some never meant for us to know their name But greatness is remembered At the Cowboy Hall of Fame And their horses, the greatest on the land Stockmen and the farmers, with their backs and with their hands Heroes who did more than most, who proved we're not the same Will never be forgotten at the Cowboy Hall of Fame Stories of the stock that's rode, and of the cowboys that were throwed The legacy of ranchers and their land Memories of storms that came, that tried another dream to claim And picking up, resolved to carry on Of buckles chased and buckles won, of tragedy and living by the gun some never meant for us to know their name But greatness is remembered at the Cowboy Hall of Fame Yes, greatness is remembered at the Cowboy Hall of Fame Hey, we appreciate you being with us today. Give Greg's music a listen and let him know your favorite tunes. Maybe he'll be playing in your area. Thank you to Stan Houston's talented production team. Next week, we get to explore roads, how they help, and how they sometimes hinder. Until then, I'm Lynn Weezy Sneed, reminding you to sit tall and ride safe. Mm-hmm.